going on guys? Well today I want to do a review on this uh, Zippo 4-in-1 Woodsman tool. Uh, pretty interesting. I recently did a demo of this uh, using some GoPro footage. I posted that so you guys can see some of my testing. I don't always show testing. I do a lot of it and people want to see more of it so I decided to show a couple, uh, you know, a couple demos there. Um, quick little note on the testing video. I did have some comments saying that the sapling that I was uh, chopping with this, it wasn't a good, you know, ideal demo because it was so springy you know uh, i do agree with that 100 percent. that wasn't the only tree that i had used this tool on for testing purposes but uh i also use other hatchets on the exact same tree to compare them to each other as well uh, the biggest reason why i did that is just conserving wood that's all uh you know if i chopped down a tree every time i wanted to test something uh, there'd be a lot less trees in the particular spot that i chopped trees down so I didn't want to do that, I wanted to conserve the wood, uh, so I figured I'd use a bunch of different tools on the same tree, which I thought was a good idea. But yes, I agree with your comment, not ideal, but of course I didn't film the other trees that I was chopping at as well. There were two other trees besides that one, which were probably twice as thick. The tops were cut off from previous testing as well, but they're much more stable. I didn't have that same springing action while chopping it. So just a little note there. So this is the four in one tool. What are the four tools? Well, as our, our main tool, you can clearly see, is a hatchet. That's number one. Number two is a hammer, okay? Number three is a hand saw, and the saw blades are inside the handle here. In a minute, I'll show you how this uh, comes apart and goes back together again. But essentially, it connects right here to here, okay? So there's our, our saw blade, and then this part here is our handle. That's what this uh, rubber reinforcement is, so we use it like that as a hand saw. So that's tool number three. And tool number four, if you didn't tell me what this tool was, I would never have guessed it because I essentially I say three tools here. But it's this piece right here. This uh, metal bail that's reinforced is actually a tent stake puller. Okay, now out of all four tools, this one works the best. This really does well at pulling tent stakes. Now I tried three different versions of tent stakes and all three, it worked very well. You just hook on the bottom. It's very comfortable to use the, the long handle to, to pull up. Very nice, but again, I never would have known that was the fourth tool unless it was told to me. Um, so, how does, this, uh, how does this work? You can see our plastic sheath here, there's a little screw. Okay, so you unscrew this. This is gonna come apart. All right, so that exposes our, our blade there. So you can see it's very simple. This screw will never fall out. All right, but it's a little uh, you know, male and female here. So it stays together, put that off to the side. So here's our actual blade, it is uh, fairly sharp. It was fairly sharp when I uh, uh, first got it. Uh, did hold a pretty good edge, I'm not sure on the steel offhand on that. But uh, we'll go back to the handle section here, okay. There's actually a little, little finger groove there. So you can pop this open, all right, and it hinges. And if I lift down, or lift up rather, so gravity, Make those uh, blades fall out. Put that to the side. All right, let's put this back down. So on one side, there's a little hook right here. So that's gonna grab onto that hook, right? And it's also going to go back through the sheath. So again, you can see the post. We put our blade back through here. You can see there's a hole in the blade itself. All right, so this hole, this side of the blade goes there. Close that side, lock it down. All right, put this back on here. All right, and close it. So that is how our blade is being held on our, uh, our tool here on the handle. Okay, and again, this is how you're gonna be holding it. All right, we have rubber here, rubber on the back side. It's very squishy. It's very comfortable just to hold it like this, okay? But I'll tell you, once you start using it, it's really not that comfortable. The extra weight up here on top for the hammer portion, it, it kind of throws off the balance of the handsaw itself. It, it's very difficult and it's very tiresome, okay? It's very fatiguing on the hand. Uh, my arm got extremely tired in using this handsaw in comparison to other handsaws that I have, okay, dedicated handsaws. And that goes back to when you have a multi-tool, which this is, it's a bunch of different tools in one, not every tool will be 
you know, really effective. You find that in, in pretty much every multi-tool. A dedicated hammer will probably be better than a hammer integrated into something else, like this. Okay, a dedicated hatchet will be better than this. Why? Because this has a hollow handle. All right, a handle is, not only is it plastic, uh, which is not a, it's not a bad thing, uh, you know, there's a lot of good, you know, durable plastics out there, but the cavity, the empty void inside here may, makes this susceptible to breakage. Okay, I've experienced that personally with some uh, hollow handled hatchets from Schrade, uh, among other companies as well. So having the hollow handle is not a good thing. Okay, if you go to strike a, uh, a log or a piece of wood and the head misses and hits in this portion here, which is extremely likely. Okay, if you chop enough wood, eventually you're gonna you know overswing or, or whatever, and it's gonna whack on a piece of wood right here really hard, and it's very susceptible to being broken. All right, it, it really weakens the design having a, a hollow handle here. So again, each tool here, nothing excels at its job except for the 10 stake puller, which actually worked really, really well. Um, but as far as like the, the saw, uh, the teeth are actually pretty aggressive. All right, I don't mind that. It does come with two blades, which is nice. So you do have a spare blade. All right, this one still has some, some wood stuck in it. So that's nice, and like I said, I mean, the teeth are aggressive enough where you saw in the demo, I mean, it cuts efficiently. It's not the most aggressive, it's not the fastest cutting handsaw, but I can tell you it's one of the, the most uncomfortable ones. Again, because of all this weight in this portion here because of the hammer. All right, so uh, the hatchet was just okay. The saw was just okay as far as its uh, performance. Um, so it's a jack of all trades, master of none. That's really what it comes down to, and that's kind of what I expected. Uh, overall, the quality is not bad. It's just a design flaw, in my opinion. The hollow handle is just not good for the uh, the hatch itself. You know, it's a good idea. It's just the execution is, uh, I don't know. I guess this is probably the best way you could execute such an idea. So I shouldn't really say that. I mean, there's no. I don't, I don't see any way they can improve this tool without you know, removing some of the other options. You know what I mean? All right, so we're all back together now. Now, something I noticed immediately upon first swing is just how uncomfortable it is to hold this hatchet, okay? For the best leverage when swinging, what you wanna hold at the base of the handle here, right? But this is a very awkward thing to hold. You know, you have to grab around this metal bale. It's not comfortable. This part here is hollow, all right? So, I mean, this is how I swing most of the time. This grip feels okay, it's fine, right? This just totally awkward and uncomfortable. So I tried, you know, choking up on it, and then essentially there's such little distance here, it just it just wasn't very effective. All right, so it's uncomfortable. And like I said, each individual tool doesn't really excel at its job except for the you know tent stake puller, which most people don't have tent stake pullers, so it's not like that's missing in their life, you know, they get the, the stakes out, you know, some way. Um, so overall, I was disappointed that none of the individual tools in here were amazing to me. You know, they're all just kind of mediocre. The hatchet does up wood. The hammer does hammer. Okay. The saw does cut, but like I said, nothing really excels, you know, except for the, uh, the, the stake puller. So overall for 50 bucks, cause that's what this thing sells for. It's $45 to $50, depending on where you're getting it. Um, it's not a bad tool, it does work. It's just uh, the gimmicky part of it, it probably won't be acceptable to like a real gearhead. If, you, if you're a real avid camper and you camp all the time, you may, you know, especially if you have experience with lots of different types of gear and different types of tool. If you're the guy that's tried 20 different hatchets, this is not the one you're gonna pick, okay, trust me. The average consumer, the average person walking into Walmart or something, or people getting into camping, or people who camp two, three times a year, this is gonna to work totally fine for them. They're not gonna think of things like, like, hey, you know, this is a little uncomfortable down here. They may initially think it, but they're not gonna really harp on it like a gearhead would. You know what I mean, does that make sense? But each individual tool does work, all right? So if you're looking for something that's like, okay, an all-in-one, you wanna have, you know, a hatchet, uh, you know integrated into your system or on your pack or whatever, uh, but you don't want to carry an extra saw Yeah, maybe this is your option. It's really it's not a bad tool, but it's not a great tool by any means uh, Especially if you have experience with lots and lots of different outdoor tools 
This is something, you will see the gimmick, in other words. Most people won't. Most people will see it as convenience. And there is a lot of convenience integrated into this tool, but the gimmick is, is very strong, okay? It's definitely here. My biggest issue with this, um, besides it just being uncomfortable, is the weakened tandem. Having that, that empty cavity in there, being plastic, it just, I feel like it's only gonna take a couple overstrikes um, to have this break. And especially when you have exposed blade, you don't want anything breaking like that. It's just, it can, a lot of potential for people getting hurt. All right, so I'm not saying that it would break. I'm just saying it's probable, you know. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll go out there and I'll do some more testing and we'll do some strikes specifically on this portion, which is a realistic test. It's something that anyone who's chopped wood, it's happened to you. It's happened to me, it's happened to you. Um, you know, you end up hitting in this area here. So uh, we'll see. I'll see if I can get it to break. Uh, with some reasonable testing but for now i'm just going to conclude it's just okay it's just really middle of the road um you're better off just getting a dedicated hatchet a dedicated saw and then there you go you're good to go as far as your your uh <laughs> you know your your tent stakes you can just pull them out by hand like the rest of us so that's my opinion on the uh the zippo woodsman the four-in-one tool it's uh eh, you know it is what it is <laughs> so thanks for watching Hope you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.